Hello. Yes, I'm back. I know it, it's just, it's strange, but here I am. <coughs> anyway, yes, you're going to see my craptastic room. I've got some pictures of the parts that I've gotten finished cleaning up, and I was going, you know, you haven't finished cleaning up, you haven't finished organizing, why are you doing this now? And I said, because I want to. It's like, I miss y'all. So, you know, going to do it. And this is just some glam glow uh, bright eyes. The stuff that I'm using today is just some of the stuff that I got all of this little tiny, puny, tiny little sample things and miniatures and such out of the beauty boxes that I was subscribed to and even though I haven't been getting the boxes anymore I still have tons. The other thing I'm doing is my new therapist is one of those people who is like going I don't know what to do with my makeup I just and she's a couple of years older than me but you know it's pretty cool and I kind of like her so yeah I figured I would do go back to basics with some of this stuff I mean I've got all manner of colorful stuff among my collection what's left of it I've been peeling that down some more it's like I don't do reviews I don't need huge collections of things I've got a couple of palettes that I'm kind of targeting for um, saving up for and I've got I spotted a new line of stuff that I had never seen before. I didn't know that Amazon had started a whole section of makeup that's on indies. And I'm going, really? How about that? Well, one of them that I found on there is called Prideful. A lot of the stuff from the line is sold out currently. But it was formed by people who are trying to support the LGBTQ plus community and they're involved with the Matthew Shepard Foundation and a few other things. And the stuff looks really good and it's really affordable. And I'm going, hmm, maybe I'd like to pick some of this up and maybe do a face with it. No, it's that affordable. I'm talking about getting a face worth, okay? Um, I haven't tried any of it yet. And for those of you who have a moral objection to Amazon, I'm sorry, but most of their um, stuff is going through Amazon or through some Walmart. Walmarts. It's real easy to spot the stuff. Everything is done in rainbows. I was looking at some of the stuff I've got in my Amazon cart. I've got a foundation and a bronzer and um, a, a small nine pan eyeshadow pa palette called Meg's and some mascara and a lippy and 
at least one eyeliner. They've got an eyeliner pencil that was left. A lot of the rest of their eyeliner stuff was already sold out. They've got some gorgeous looking lippies. Everything from gloss versions through um, opaque mattes and they, they, they look gorgeous. They really do. The colors look good. The formulas sound great. They've got a leaping bunny on the on the front, so or one of the bunnies is on it. So they're vegan, cruelty free, all that lovely stuff. And my dog is barking. I'll have to give you the long story of the dog at some point. Because I know, doesn't sound like my little guys. The oldest little guy is going to be 16 in February. And he's really starting to get kind of worn out and crunchy. Right now, the dog that's barking, I'm not normally used to big dogs. And he's a big dog. He really is, in case you can't tell from the tone of his voice. But he's so sweet. And his name is Gen. And he's part tick hound. We're not sure completely if he's blue or black tick hound because Sometimes you look at the ticks and it's blue looking, sometimes it's black looking, but his saddle is brindle and his legs are brindle and white. So he's, he's a mixed up thing. Originally my son and his wife had him and their Cane Corso, which is an Italian Mastiff, and before we realized that both dogs were mature, we ended up with a litter of puppies. So one of the children is still here. Um, we're trying to rehome to but Gen is such a sweet, lovable mush that Jim and I kept him. He's upstairs with us now, and he and the other dogs get along just fine. Sometimes, because he's still young enough to be acting like a puppy, he will sometimes mow down the little old man who's all of like eight pounds at this point. But he's generally very cautious around people. He loves the grands and, you know, does really well with Gemini. So he's a sweetie. He's very cute. If I can find a decent picture of them among the stuff, I'll see if I can put that up. Behind me is God's own mess. Truly God's own mess. Looks like the workshop after you got everybody put together, right? This is the pile where the platypus came from. Anyway, directly behind me and behind the chair is the shelving that I have put up that's got that I've been working on getting organized that's got most of the makeup stuff on it and the rest of the stuff is kind of like need to fold and or go through and pitch and that kind of stuff and it's like they know what happens with some people when they're having issues with their their mental health or whatever and it's like you kind of get at this point you're getting a kind of insight into how things have been lately anyway yes 
Hair has been dyed for the season. Yes. This is the Adore Raspberry Twist. Yes, I got it through Amazon. Do I like Amazon? No. Is Amazon one of the few places that will deliver out here in the sticks? Yep. Um, and I still have my uh, student um, student discount on getting Prime. So I'm not completely done with that part because I paid it while I was still a active student. Uh, yeah, for anybody who didn't see some of the stuff that I uh, mentioned on December 10th, I had my virtual commencement, which was really kind of neat. When they did the regular commencement for the people that were going to actually come and walk back in November, they took some really, really interesting film shots. They did things like, they had this little camera carrying robot who comes up on stage with a robe draped around him and him, her, it, I don't know. They didn't specify. And the president of the college, well, the university, hands a diploma cover to the little robot. So you get seeing him up close and personal, saying congratulations and handing over a diploma. And then the little robot goes off stage and then goes back up the center aisle between all of the um, live people who are there to graduate and do their commencement. So as the little robot goes up the aisle, the people are standing up, the other students are standing up and waving and yelling and shouting and cheering and you know, like they would if you were really there. I really wish I could have been, but getting from Oregon to New Hampshire is a bit of a long walk and a bit of an expensive flight. And then there's like the hotel and the food and da 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 da. I'm going to try and remember to put pictures of me up in my cap and gown and all that stuff because I've got those because for the virtual uh, now one of the neighbor dogs is barking shush tough tough he's a great big German shepherd <laughs> and he likes to argue with Gen um, they both boys and they both think they big stuff you know but they take the pictures of people who are graduating and when they announce your name, they've got your picture up there on the screen as well as your degree. And all mine said was Bachelor of Arts, which is what it is. If you've got any honors, they mention that. And it's like, yes, I wore honor cords, but that was from the um, Sigma Tau Delta, the International English Honor Society, because I qualified and they invited me. So I said, oh, yeah, I can do that. I had pretty good grades. I was literally a fraction away from cum laude. A fraction. I was so mad. <laughs> a 
squid fraction. Anyway, what I'm going to do once I get off this tear is I have collected up stuff from all of the subscription boxes for things the things that I've collected from the subscription boxes and haven't managed to finish up yet now some of the stuff I actually have finished up or have decluttered or whatever so I don't have quite a full face of stuff that's left from the boxes and the samples and you gotta anyway I've got things like I've already got my moisturizer on which is the true cream aqua bomb from belief see how tiny and it's almost gone I don't know if you can see in there or not but it's almost gone I've got like a couple more dips into it and it'll be gone one of the things that I got was um, the Ace Butte eye, eye primer eyeshadow primer I'll get it right in a minute now this stuff is going to take me forever to use up because literally that's all you need that is it that's all I put on my eye and it is amazing now I've got squirted it out I'm going to like redo my eyes a little bit just put another layer on just because I hate wasting the stuff it's wonderful and I've got a bunch of my mirrors set up and yes I will still be using a smaller hand mirror when I'm doing close-up stuff because Heaven help me, I still can't see anything, and I still don't have contact lenses. And the eye doctor, the last time I went, said, well, if you want to use contacts, I can give you a contact for one eye, and that'll bring stuff, you know, into focus for one visual length. But you're going to have to just adjust to having one eye going to one length and the other eye going. And I said, never mind. So, I'll stick with my glasses, thank you. But I've got eyebrow stuff. And I've got liners. And I don't currently have any lip liners. No, wait, I do. I think. No. This is from a Muse, and this is something I ordered. I don't currently have any lip liners from a box. However, I have a face primer, and I have a lip, and I have Perlis, which is the baby cream, and I've got... I've got a couple of different highlighters. I've got an Ofra blush. I've got a Ciate blush. Um, I've got a Space Case highlight. You know, it's just, I've got all kinds of stuff. I've got a Colored Rain highlight. I don't have any bronzers. <clears throat> so I grabbed one of my light bronzers out of my e.l.f. collection. I don't currently have any mascara left, so I've got my Essence. 
I've got a couple other lippies. I've got a bite lippy and a pixie lippy. And if I really wanted, I've got another lippy that was one that the Ann sent me because she wasn't, the, the color was just not her. Um, I've got a velveteen cream eyeshadow called Super Base from, from INM Cosmetics. Got Com. and that is so pretty it really is it's a beautiful beautiful purple it's kind of a cream to powder thing at this point I can't tell for sure if I'm actually in frame doing that may have to check the monitor which is now yonder instead of right in front of me so I'm not looking up at the screen instead of at you guys and then I've got a bunch of other singles of eye makeup and some of the little mini quads this one's um, day to night cool from pretty young thing PYT and then Hello Beautiful from Chella, and I've got a Nomad, and I've got an Estate, and I've got a Real Her, and I've got a Phase Zero, and just all manner of stuff. So I figured I would do something relatively simple. And, yeah, you know, I'll show you the rest of the stuff as I decide which one I'm going to use. But I've got literally... Now, yeah, let's just go ahead and show you some of it now. This is the Ciate London. Now, this thing looks absolutely amazingly bright. And it's called Matchmaker. And it's one of the swirly ones. So there's the finger, but it's not that bright when you put it on. And then, where did the other one go? The Ofra blush, which is called Chameleon. You know, this one. Let's find a different finger here, woman. The Ofra one is a matte. The Ciate has got a little sparkle to it. You know, I've got several different things to work with here. There's the bite lip. And... Pixie. And the Visanti. Apparently somebody decided I needed a bunch of pinkies. Now I have gotten so many compliments on the Visanti that it's not funny. It's just, it's gorgeous. And the eye pencil, which is not really entirely my shade, but it's not bad. And this is a Model Co. Never heard of it before. The eyeliner pencils, we have Cleo Noir, which is a purple. purple and it's a roll up so you don't got to sharpen it and then there's queen spelled with a V in 
What was this one called? Dragon Liner. I don't see the name. I don't see a name for a color. But it's supposed to be long wear. And there's that one. And then this is the last of the liners. Beauty for real. And this one, it's yet again another roll up. All three of these are all roll ups. And the color is called Olive. It's in the middle there, kind of. I got a little close to the black line, but there you go. That's the majority of the stuff. What I'm using for foundation is the Perlice Radiant Glow Illuminating BB Cream almost gone. Right. The face primer is a Pixie H2O. Again, almost gone. I'm trying to use this stuff up. Anyway, I figured I would do what I usually do, which is start with my face. Not, excuse me, start with my eyes. I don't even remember I don't know why, because I've, like, been doing makeup before I go in to see my paid friend. Let's see. What am I going to start with? I need something to start with, and I really don't want to start with a shimmer necessarily. Let's see what I've got in the little quads. Ah, that ought to work. Now, my paid friend. Now, these two quads are really similar. Really, really, really. My paid friend is still... She doesn't normally do makeup, so I'm not going to just... Oh, good. Somebody's in the kitchen playing with the garbage disposal. Sorry, guys. Anyway, she doesn't normally do makeup, so I'm not just going to jump straight in to doing some of my bunch of big color stuff. I'm going to attempt... Watch it. I'm going to attempt to be nice. I said watch it. And I'm taking... Now these things, the small ones, they don't have the color names, but I'm taking this one up here and going to start and just start kind of tapping along to start defining that raised crease that those of us with hooded eyes need to consider because let's be real with hooded eyes if you're not careful where you put stuff you got no color when you open your eyes because that hood is just going to fold right down now granted as you get older damn thing gets lower which just is annoying so right now I'm just kind of patting that first color in until and making sure that I can see above it now some people will tell you it's like Figure out where your fold is and start your new crease right there where the 
fold is after a little while you kind of get used to where it is so you don't necessarily have to be drawing lines and stuff but I do have a tendency to kind of follow the outer seven thing because with the depth of the folds in the corners of my eyes trying to do a winged liner is right out. I know some people can do the things like the whale tail where they do extra lines and stuff so it looks like a interesting pattern when their eyes are closed and it looks like a regular winged liner when their eyes are open. But once you get to a certain level of creasing, yeah, not as easy to do. Plus, it's you got to take into account your eyes are not level. Nobody's symmetrical back and forth. I've got an extra divot right here from where my baby sister threw a rock and it chipped a little piece of the orbit. Ah, oh, the glorious days of childhood. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me get this so I don't finish racking my jeans. I have a bad habit that way. I will forget to get and it's like I've got a whole drawer full right down here in front of me. And I will forget anyway and rub off my brush on my jeans. I try not to, I've had color switches and I try not to use them because some of them are just too rough and it will slice up the ends of your brushes. And yeah, I don't got that kind of money. <laughs> I'm not going to just let them get sliced up. Now, I'm taking this lighter color here and I'm just going to kind of like go over the edge of this just a little and yeah I will end up with the color all the way up to my eyebrow and you know why because I have hooded eyes which means I have a whole lot less real estate to work with So I take up as much real estate otherwise as I feel like. Eep. And then I'm going to pick up the other quad, the cella, because this color down here in the bottom corner is darker than the ones that are in here. And I'm going to use that darker brown from down there in the corner. And I'm just going to tap it right here to kind of give this area a little more depth. You don't have to go ham. But it does make a little difference. And you get a little more drama. Now, no, I haven't started putting anything under the eye yet. I have no idea what I'm going to do when I get there. I'll let you know. Now, one of the things, if you're just getting started, you do not need to own every palette on the planet. You don't need to own every expensive palette on the planet, especially. You don't want to go out and start buying these big expensive palettes for one thing, not until you've actually 
gotten an idea of how they work by watching people who do reviews online. Plus, what if you hate it? What if you absolutely hate the palette? Hate the colors, hate the way it works, and you're stuck with an expensive palette. I mean, everybody and their brother is going nuts for things like Pat McGrath. A hundred and twenty-five dollars for some of her palettes. Natasha Denona, a hundred and twenty-nine dollars for some of her palettes. And I'm going, okay, yeah, they're pretty, but my bills aren't. And I'd like to be able to pay them so they don't yell at me. So we have gotten a start. And now I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do from here because I could do more brown. I could do, I've got plenty of more brown. I really do. Plus, I've got a pink and I've got that purple. Yeah, the pink is a nomad. I've got, come on, open up. This one that's called Flower Child, which is an Ibby. And I might use that one as the inner corner. We'll see. I've got this one from Estate, which is called Pipe, and is an absolute glorious copper. I've got Phase Zero, and this is called Banana Beige. Now, uh, most of these that I've got, that I'm pulling out now, are all shimmers of some sort. Doing a shimmer is not required. You don't have to do a shimmer if you don't have one that you like or you're just not into shimmers. Okay, and this one is called Victorious, and this is the real her. That's mostly just kind of a pinky gold. And you've seen the other, other ones in the quads where it's like browns and golds and a pink and a gold and so I'd ask you what you think but I'm not live so there you go while I'm contemplating my navel and the colors I'm going to see how this model. I've used it a few times, but not so much that I'm always sure that I like it. It's one of the triangles. See, my favorite eyebrow pencil is, I, I, I don't know why, but I cannot keep my eyebrows level when I'm doing the pencil thing, the key, I, it, it's an automatic. Mm. But my favorite eyebrow pencil is an elf pencil. If you've never watched me before, I have a thing for elf that just is pretty well ridiculous, but. They make some of my favorite stuff, and affordable is the word. I can get my favorite foundation for six bucks, okay? And if they're out of it at 
the local Rite Aid. I can get online and since I spend enough with them one way or another, I have hit what they call icon status. It's kind of like being a high up in some of the other makeup seller stuff and I get free shipping a lot and all that. Now, problem is come the first of the year they gonna reset that and I have to buy stuff again to go back to that level I don't see that as an issue I really don't because I get a lot of my pencils from e.l.f. I get a lot of my face products from e.l.f. I get some of my skin care from e.l.f. No, I am neither sponsored nor known to e.l.f. And I don't care. I still like their stuff. Okay, I think Let's see. I've got a salmon sweater on. Let me grab up one of the pinkies here. I think I'll take the real her. The thing is hard to open sometimes. Why is it? This one's called Victorious. I'll have to wait till I do the editing to know if it really showed up that well. Now, some of you all have a hissy fit when people use their fingers. And it's like we had them first. The fingers were there first. And if you think people early on in the wearing of makeup didn't use their fingers think again they might use some kind of concocted brush if say the they were looking for little fine lines for something but they're not necessarily going to use a brush for everything. Fingers were first. Plus, when I get to doing things like the rest of my face and all that with some of the funky shape sponges and all let me remind you people did just fine for a long time using sea sponges you know natural sea sponges and those funky little triangular sponges that people used and flat sponges and you know, if you've ever been in a, you know, like school drama department or something, you know about them triangular sponges. They are the same material. And the reason they had all of those angles and stuff was so you could do the same dang thing. You can go through and do sharp cuts if you really want to do a sharp cut. You can do little tight places like squishing it down and instead of having a sponge that's got this kind of point on the end 
to get up in that corner. You just fold that little triangular sponge down a little bit and that'll go right up in that corner the same way. <coughs> okay, that don't, that's really subtle, okay? For me, this is way subtle. However, she don't look bad. I can work with subtle now and again. However, I think I need to darken up this corner on this side. That's one of the problems with having the way my lights are set up. I don't have the best lighting. I really don't. And right now, I've got way more light on this side. And it's harder for me to see what I've done on this side. So I sometimes, I'm looking at it and going, is that even? So I'll just like even it up now. For all I know, by the time I get finished, this one will be pale and this one will be dark. Seriously way dark. The other thing is, is I, because of the camera settings, it's not always showing me what you guys will eventually see. Well, yuns, y'all, I gotta stop using that you guys thing. You lot. I picked that one up from Harry Potter. I got no use for JK right now, but I still love Harry Potter. That looks a little better. A little better. Just a little. If this gets way too long, I'll like zap it a little kill some of the flappy mouth okay now with that part done I can put that mirror down for a minute and I'm going to take my pixie skin treats and the H2O skin drink pure hydration gel and use it as a lovely primer because as far as I'm concerned it is it leaves the skin just a little tacky got a I've got a bunch of primers that have come in out of these subscription boxes and if you're just getting started that's a good way to start getting some of the um, samples of stuff you might want to try don't go crazy you don't need every box I had Ipsy for a long time. And that's where I got a lot of this stuff. And then for a little while I had BoxyCharm, but that was really expensive for not a lot of payoff. I'll be right back. You only really need to put the primer where you have trouble keeping stuff on to start with. And where I have a lot of trouble keeping stuff on is through here and across through here because of my glasses. And, you know, along here where the, the temples for the glasses go. So that's where I start.
Now, I go back and forth with application techniques and <coughs> excuse me, stuff like that for foundation. Most often I use a brush, but this glowy stuff from Perlice is a little on the runny side and am I going to have to go find one of the other ones because there's nothing trying to come out. Maybe I've already used it all. Do, 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 do. Ah. Yeah, this stuff is kind of soft and mushy. Now, when I get to my concealer, it's going to be the same thing as with some of the other stuff. I don't have any concealers left from any of the boxes. And because of where I live, the nearest Ulta or Sephora, and the Sephora we have is inside of JCPenney, but to get to it, it's a two-hour drive. Currently, I don't have a working car. And I'm not driving that far just to go to the makeup store. So I can't go to the makeup store and go, give me a sample of. So I will be using my e.l.f. Concealer. Yes, I said elf again. And no, I am not worried about whether or not they know who I am because let's be real, this is such a small channel. I would do them absolutely little good if they did send me stuff. A company named Apto sent me some stuff when I first got started. And I did a full month of trying this stuff because it was a skin care. I really like it. And I thank them most kindly for sending it. And I told people straight up that I really liked it. However, my channel is so tiny that I never saw another face. The anything apto that I have had since has come in through one of the sample boxes. Now, there's a bunch of sample boxes. There's even one that you can buy from Sephora. There's ones you can buy from Macy's. There's even ones from Walmart where you're not necessarily going to get makeup, but you do get a lot of body care products and skin care products. <coughs> and that manner of thing. Oh, and if any of you want to use the damp sponge routine and are going, but I need one of them little things to set it in so it's not rolling around. I use a little crystal ring holder because I don't normally put my rings on a ring holder. They're either on my finger or in a special drawer so I don't lose them. And why would I take my rings off? Because I have fibro. And sometimes my hands are on fire. Yeah, now this stuff really is what you would call radiant. I have got a glow. Gots the glow.
that's my little girl doggy laying on the bed and she is snuffing all around looking for something I don't know what there's nothing over there she's like snuffling under the pillows and it's like you don't get food or snacks in bed dog dog what are you doing my nose is all broke out I have no idea why well actually I do but it's kind of a complicated thing that goes along with an autoimmune issue that I don't feel like going into today <coughs> And I've got these little patches on the sides of my face that when my nose acts up, those little patches are next. Now, let me tell you, no matter how much concealer you use or how much foundation you use, once you get to a certain point in your life, more than likely, there ain't squat that either foundation or concealer is going to do for you that will make all of the wrinkles disappear. At which point you kind of have to look at it rather pragmatically and go, okay, I got them and by damn I earned them. I'm not ashamed of my wrinkles. I really am not. I have made it 64 years. It'll be 65 in, in 23. And I have earned every smile line, every laugh line, every worry line, every blessed one of these wrinkles is a battle stripe of some sort. And I earned them. But nothing and I do mean nothing will completely diminish your wrinkles after a certain point. You can kind of hide them, you can kind of fade them a little bit. But depending on the makeup you're using, if you get some makeup that you haven't ever tried before, <laughs> and put it on and then look at it a little while later and say oh my goodness because it's done set into your wrinkles sorry that can happen now I actually do have them itty bitty teardrops that can get right up in there but this works majority of the reason I put concealer on at all is because of the red patches and it goes with all of my little breakouts and it gives a few extra layers for my glasses to rub off I am not really under any illusion that I am reducing my age <laughs> or the appearance thereof. Worse yet, I forgot to take some of them old age chin whiskers off. 
I've had chin whiskers for a long time because I've got PCOS. Now, we will see. Sometimes, depending on how it feels that day, the police BB cream will set down all on its own. I don't got to use any powders or anything. And I really don't want to use powder because if I use powder, that just makes the... Um, just makes it more obvious as things dry that I've got rinkies because the powder will just crawl right up in them rinkies. Let's see if I can get rid of some of this. Well, some of it came off pretty easy. But not those. Oh well. Now, get my little elf out here. And hopefully Genji will hush. And it's like, yeah, that'll happen. And it's like, again, shush. And take my little elf pale bronzer because let's be real we're into winter and I don't go out in sunlight often anyway my autoimmune issue is UV reactive so I stay in the house more often than not sometimes I get rebellious and go out and then I pay for it And no, I do not have COVID. I have a cold. It's been snowing around here. And like it or not, I still have to go out of the house now and then. You know, doctor's appointments, groceries, that kind of thing. We have this itty bitty taxi service here in town that's pretty cheap for us old farts. So, if it's a doctor's appointment, they've got a um, medical transport contract to haul people's butt back and forth to their doctors. But if it's something like going to the grocery store, you're going to cough up a buck or something. Okay, let's see. Do I want the Ofra? Yeah, I'm going to take the Ofra because that's the map. And yes, I've grabbed the hand mirror because the Ofra doesn't have a mirror and the little elf bronzer does. <sighs> Yes, I start up high and don't go down as low because let's be real, the apples in my cheeks that used to be up here are now down here. It's a hazard. You start getting older and things shift. Things shift. Things drop. Things are not where you thought you left them last. And it just, yep. That's enough of that. Grab up my bronzer brush just a little bit. And Please. Now you get to hear my husband taking the doggies out for a potty. 
the two that are downstairs do not get along with Gim. So. And the two that are downstairs are the ones we're trying to rehome because they don't really get along with anybody. Well, they get along with my son and they mostly get along with his wife, but not everybody else. Alrighty. So far, so good. Now, I do not have any setting spray that came from a box. The only spray I currently have that came from a box is this Grace and Stella hydrating facial spray. In rose. And man, when I tell you it says it's in rose, it means it. I love rose. I love rose scent. I like rose scented stuff. But dude, if anybody has ever run into rose absolute, so I've got some, some setting spray from other places. And I'm just going to give it a quick spritz. This setting spray cost me a whole dollar eighty eight from Shop Miss A, AOA Studio. It's a dollar eighty eight and it's got a little A plus at the top, not because it's good, but because this particular line with the A plus on it goes to help support education and they send money to educational groups. They've got one that's called Paw Paw, which goes to animal rescue. Lovely fine mist, inexpensive, and it works. Do all that before I put on the highlighter and before I put on the mascara so I don't have wet mascara flapping down on my face. Don't mind the teeth. I have mentioned this to a few people as time has gone by. I was given a medication called tetracycline when I was a little kid before my permanent teeth came in. They didn't realize until quite a while after they started using it that tetracycline has a habit of altering not only the color of your bones, but it gets into the... Get down, Gan! He's a big boy. Um, it will. It gets into the tissues on the interior of your teeth, and if you use it long enough, it will turn your teeth black. Especially if they were still up and undescended before. Yeah, while you were taking it. And I didn't have to take it that long, but dag. I can't there's nothing they can do. Bleaching won't reach it. It's too deep into the tissues. It's not a matter of being on the surface surface or even dug in to the first layer or, or two of the hard dentine. Don't 
upstairs. Got down. Okay, I've got the Cleo Noir in the purple that I'm going underneath here with. You do not have to use the same colors under your eye if you don't want to. That you have put on the rest of your eye. I like to use blues down here. I don't have any blues in the stuff that I've got laying here. And so I'm just taking whatever the a nice bright blue will make your eyes look brighter. Even if they're not colored blue. I don't want to get too much purple un under here because if I get too much purple under here, people will think I haven't slept in a month. And then just for the heck of it, I'm going to play with some of this olive green. Again, just for the heck of it. Now, you don't have to do your waterline if it makes you uncomfortable. Matter of fact, if it makes you uncomfortable, don't worry about it. Don't even think on it. Just put a, like, take a little fine brush and press some color up under those lower lashes. But I've been doing this a little while. And I kind of like having my waterline done. There are times if I'm in like a serious hurry, I'll do the lower waterline, the upper waterline, both of which are known as tight lining. Throw a little mascara at it something on the lips and go out the door. And it looks perfectly reasonable. It makes it look like you took a minute for yourself. And that's actually the point of doing any of this. Taking a minute for yourself. You don't do makeup for anybody but you. If it makes you feel good, party on. If it doesn't make you feel good, don't do it. If you like it, go for it. If you really just don't want to be bothered, it's up to you. Let's see how... Dan! Get off my bed! Dan! Dan Jane, come here! Sniffing daddy's pillows. Doofus. I'm going to try putting some of the Ibby Flower Child into the inner corner and see if that's bright enough to make me happy. Now, doing something in the inner corner to lighten it up is a trick people have been using for a long time to make their eyes look a little brighter. And in the theater, they use little dots of color, white on the inner corner, 
and a bit of red on the outer corner because on a live stage it helps keep the eyes from running together in a single almost like a unibrow except then you look like an alien with one eye that runs all the way across that's not too bad I may do something with something a little brighter out of one of these things we'll see No, nope, not that one. Okay, yeah, this is the one that's got the little pinky bit. Up here in this corner. It's a little bit brighter. Now, yeah. The inner corner does not have to be blinding by any stretch. It really doesn't. You just want it to be a little lighter. Let's see. I think because this one has got a bit of glitter in this darker brown which is why I didn't put it in the corner out here I used the matte because I prefer matte on a lot of stuff see little tiny brush And I'm just going to kind of run it along under here and then pull it up a little bit into. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but there is all kinds of little wrinkly places right there. So, yeah, that's what I'm on about with the wrinkles when it comes to trying to get a wing liner. But what I'm doing is with this brown is I am still lining under the lashes just a little bit and then pulling it up into color in that corner of the eye. What I'm going to do next is just kind of clean this up a little bit. Most people try to do this before they do things like throat setting at it, but I did it this way. I was too busy yapping. And then I'm going to take that bright pink again and get the color off that itty bitty little brush. Take the bright pink and go right up here under the tail of that brow. Not a lot. Doesn't need a lot. So, like I said, this is a great way getting like one of the little subscription boxes great way to try out a few things. Get what your budget will fit. Try not to get crazy and go out and having a FOMO, otherwise known as fear of missing out, 
don't get all FOMO and go running out and buy up everything that's on the new release list. Most of the people that are doing that are doing it because it's their job. They go out and buy this stuff not because they just want it. They go out and buy it because part of their job is to review the stuff so they can tell people what they think of it and whether or not they think it should be something you want to look at. I just dropped one of my things and it rolled off and now the dog's looking at it funny and I'm going, don't you eat it. Don't you eat it. You eat it and I'll bop you. Okay, now since I don't have a lip liner from any of the box stuff, I've got one that, believe it or not, it's from LA Colors and I got it at Dollar Tree. Shh, don't tell nobody. It's a roll up. And it's called Pinky. Now, considering the color of most of the lipstick and lippy stuff that I drug out here, I don't see that's going to be a problem. You know? So, I'm going to put on the... Pinky... Because it pretty much goes with just about anything I brought out. The other one that's really pink, the, the pixie one, is what rolled off. I'm not putting that one on tonight. Apparently. I didn't do... lip pencil much at all for a very long time. I thought it was silly. And then I realized that the lip pencil was keeping the lipstick from running up in them little creases around my mouth. I don't have a lot of them, but I got them. Now, some of those come from vitamin deficiencies. Some of them come from being a smoker, if you're a smoker. <clears throat> Some of them just show up because you're old. I'm going to use the Visanti, and this one is called Super Mom Power Oils Lip Gloss is the style I haven't found one yet that's called Super Grandma Now I spend a lot of my time Telling people that just because you are a person of a certain age, you do not have to be stuck with whatever the 
fashion police say, you don't have to be stuck with just beige. You don't have to be stuck with just brown and beige. Or brown, brown, beige, and cream. You can wear whatever flipping color you want. However, I did this, like I said, because I've got somebody that is being very, very helpful to me. And my mental health and she wants to understand makeup better and I told her I'd do her a video. She's got some of the same problems I do. Got the hooded eyes going on and all that. Now this I know freaks some people out too is when you do the upper line. You know when I started this it was quiet around here. And then everything got loud. The grandkids got loose. The dogs got uppity. And I started doing this and everything was so quiet. And then by the end of it, I've got everybody in the house going. Now, I used the black pencil on the upper, upper water line just because. You can do your lines any way you want. If you really want to, you can take something like one of these colors and the itty bitty bitty brush and instead of worrying about doing a liquid liner you can take that itty bitty bitty brush and dip it in just a little bit and go through and run it just kind of tap it right along the eyelashes And it'll look just as good as if you went through with a fancy liner pen or whatever else. Or a little bottle and a brush. You just take it easy, take it slow, and put it right along the base of the lashes. Not a big deal. You don't have to have tons of stuff. Other thing is, believe it or not, you don't have to have tons of stuff to do your eyebrows either. If you've got a matte brown that's close enough or a matte black that's close enough to your eyebrow color you can just take a small brush brush some of that through it works Alright. Mascara. Now, I'm going to tell you a trick. Do your lower lashes first. I want to know 
What? Did you see what I was doing? Holding my up, the up, my eyes wide open. And doing that, if you've got wet mascara on them upper lashes, you're just as likely to transfer. So do the lower lashes first so you can keep your eyes open without transferring stuff. If you've got hooded eyes, the worst part is right here in this inside corner. But see how close it gets. Now, I occasionally wear false lashes just to thicken up the ones I've got because they're not, they're not terribly long and it's not terribly thick and all that stuff. But false lashes are a whole nother skill set. And I don't feel like dealing with it. Plus, even if you're going to use false lashes, you really should mascara your lashes anyhow. And yeah, you're supposed to curl them and all that stuff. And I have a curler. I don't like doing it, but I have a curler. So, since I don't like doing it, I don't usually do it. I just stick my mascara on and go on about it. Now, let's see. Space case highlighter or colored rain. No flash needed. Colored rain. Now the colored rain one has got a bit of a green cast to it. It's gold and green and a little beige. Space case is just pretty much gold. Or I could take, believe it or not, yes, believe it or not, I could take one of the fancy glittery things out of here and brush over. Or I could take let's see I could take Flower Child and use a highlight. I could take the Banana Beige and use it as a highlight. I could take the Nomad which is called aperitif and run it as a pink highlight even though it says it's a eyeshadow even says it's an intense eyeshadow let's see I believe I'm actually going to take the Nomad eyeshadow and its little pinky self. Now, you can put this stuff on so that it's so heavy that you look like you're trying to contact outer space. Or you can gently put it on just to brighten your face up a little. 
because what you're looking for is a glow if you're facing them and no real like funny looking um, lines or like some of them the bases are really beige or really gray and you get kind of a gray cast on your face I have a tendency to kind of run it up here even though I've got a highlight shade up in the top do it anyway because I just do I'm extra that way there is a great debate about doing the tip of your nose or not I just run it down the center of my nose if it lands on the tip of my nose I'm not going to cry kind of blend it down a little bit so it it's it seems like it's coming out up above your blush you don't want to look like you've got Neapolitan ice cream on your face you know brown pink strawberry <laughs> so you know you you want to look a little put together don't get too crazy with it unless you really want to especially like if you're going out to someplace glitzy for a party like New Year's or something if it's New Year's or something like that go for it I usually put just a little bit right across that Cupid's bow. Now some people will take their lip liner and go straight across here so they completely obscure the Cupid's bow and I went, I like my Cupid's bow. probably ought to brush that hair out just a little bit but I don't know where I put my brush like I said this is still my new setup I don't have all of the stuff in place yet but there it is there it is there it is what do you think Would you be ashamed of Grandma if she looked like this? Now, like I said, if you have not been here before, this is subtle for me. Seriously subtle. It's like, you know, I'm all about living the colorful life. There's a reason I have things like this salmon-colored sweater, and this, this is kind of low-key for me I wear glitter I wear sequins I wear colors I've got a sweater that's this color and it's got colorful buttons sewn all around the neck and I bought it like that I didn't come home and decorate it I bought it like that on purpose play with your makeup Take a little time for yourself. You know, it's, it's, there's a lot of people that refer to it as makeup therapy because it's good to let yourself think about you for a while. <clears throat> Doesn't have to be colorful. Doesn't have to be special doesn't even have to be a special occasion and you know it's like somebody said we spent so much time during the pandemic where we couldn't do things like wear our lipstick because I mean why bother there's you know you're gonna have a mask on 
if you like wearing your favorite lipstick, if it makes you feel good, wear it while you're cleaning the house and doing nothing but running around in your torn up blue jeans. It's about what you want and what you like and what you want to do. If it makes you feel good, go for it. Can't nobody stop you unless you let them. Stay out of trouble. I do not have bail money. Stay out of trouble. No bail money. Remember that part. Be good to each other. Be nice to somebody just for the hell of it. Dare you. Bye.